Welcome back to the Armstead Family YouTube channel. We are super excited about today's topic. We are going to talk to you guys about how and where to start your minimalism journey. The reason why we're so excited about this is because not only did we want to talk about this, but we got so many comments and questions on this very topic, how and where to start. So today we're going to give you guys five tips on how to start and where to start in your minimalism journey. And if you haven't already, go ahead and hit that subscribe button and click the bell so you never miss out on any of our videos. So let's get started. Tip number one, determine your why. That's gonna look different for all of us. We all have our own reasons. We really have to just take the time to think about why we're doing this. It's not a movement. It's not that someone else is doing it. It's really a personal experience. Maybe your why is that you just have too much stuff or maybe you are downsizing your house. Maybe clutter gives you anxiety or maybe you just want more time with your family and the things in your home and the condition of your house are kind of taking you away from that. So tip number one is to determine your why so that all of this has a purpose. Tip number two, determine your mindset. So you have to really realize what exactly is gonna be your frame of mind going into minimalism. Now, I'm a big believer on just start where you're at and just jump right into it. But to be able to sustain it and maintain it over a long period of time, you have to know the mindset behind owning less things. You have to determine how do you tie the way that you're going to live every day, your mindset, into your why in the beginning. Why did I start this journey in the first place? Why did I want to get rid of things in the first place. So mm -hmm. as you are continuing on day by day, determining and honing in your mindset on how you're going to own less stuff is crucially important before you even start decluttering. Yeah. Also, when it comes to your mindset, really understanding why you even do or purchase things in the first place. So why do you buy certain tools? Why do you buy certain clothes? Why do you buy certain things? What drives you to buy those things? Sometimes that is just part of the consumerism of how we've been brought up in life or how we determine our own self-worth or how, you know, how we deal with stress. Sometimes we just like to buy things because it makes us feel good. Let's be honest, it feels good to press the purchase button on Amazon. It feels good, but really understanding the reason why you do certain things is so important when it comes to your mindset because understanding the thoughts that you have and how they lead to the behaviors and actions that you do, that is gonna be so crucial as you are moving into the journey of minimalism. Tip number three, start in the easiest room of your house. The reason I recommend this is because I didn't do this and I realized there was an easier way. So the reason you start in an easier room is because you'll build momentum. So by the time you get to the room that really needs a good decluttering, you'll already kind of know what you're doing and already have that drive to let go of stuff. So start in the easiest room, build that momentum. Once you're completely done with that room, then move on to the next. And what's so great about that is if you start in the easiest room, let's say the living room, once you see your living room completely decluttered and open and free and full of space and peace, it's gonna make you really wanna jump into the next project, yeah. the next room. And that's the whole thing, building that momentum so that by the time you get to the biggest room or the most decluttered space in your house, you already know how to start and where to start and you don't feel so overwhelmed. It's not really ideal to try to knock out the entire house at one time. There have been people who have gone for it and they've done it, yeah. but it could lead to burnout. So we want to develop the mindset again of being able to maintain and keep the house completely decluttered as time goes on and it's easy to maintain. Tip number four, how to get rid of items. So I suggest going through every item, holding it in your hand and asking yourself a few questions. So first of all, do you like the item? If no, then there you go. Two, do you use this item? And this one's a little more tricky because sometimes we have items that we use a couple times a year. So really determine if that item deserves a place in your house 365 days a year when you use it three times. So that's a really tough one, but start by asking yourself, have I used this in the last six months? If the answer is no, consider donating it. And then as you get a little bit more seasoned in this process, you can start asking yourself, have I used this item in the last three months? And then when you move forward, have I used it in the last 30 days? So kind of use that as a marker for getting rid of things. So another question I like to ask myself is, is this useful? 
So something could look nice, but if it's just cluttering up your space and it's serves no purpose, then consider getting rid of it. And then the last one, I would say there's a lot of questions you could really ask yourself to dig deep into the why you're keeping it, but ask yourself, would you purchase it again? This one's really big with clothes. There might be like a shirt where you're like, ah, I'll keep it just in case. But if you don't wear it and you don't like it and you wouldn't purchase it again, consider donating it. All right, tip number five, maintenance. So how- Ew. <laughs> That's how you say maintenance. So tip number five is maintaining what you've worked so hard to achieve. Every couple of months for us, we go through each room again and we determine if there's anything that we might want to donate or toss. So maybe a few months ago you held on to something that you thought you wanted to keep, but today maybe you want to get rid of it. And a big eye opener for us is that we've been in quarantine for over 60 days now. So I know that there's a lot of items that I thought I would need that I haven't. And if I haven't used them this time, I probably really don't need them. So I am gonna go through a couple of rooms again and see if there's anything that I can donate. What's so awesome about getting to this point in your minimalism journey is that it doesn't take much time at all. Once you get to a place where you're just maintaining, you look around your house and every day you see so much space and so much freedom and you want to keep up with that lifestyle. And have you ever tried to clean up your entire house over the weekend and it feels so great. At the end of the week, you see and you look around and you're like, man, it is all back to normal. It's completely <laughs> messy and completely cluttered. The beauty of having this maintenance lifestyle and having the mindset of minimalism and simple living is that it doesn't really get to that point. And even if it does get really messy, it only takes you a few minutes to clean it all up. So if you want to be able to maintain a clean and simple house, you gotta start somewhere. So we encourage you to just start now, start in the easiest room possible and really determine your why and go through all of these five steps. Yeah, it doesn't have to be complicated. You don't need to read a bunch of books or watch a bunch of shows. These are just five easy tips. Anyone can do it and anyone can benefit from it. So we hope that you found these five tips useful. And in case you guys were seeing a little bit of movement over here on my side, my little baby girl was right there. <laughs> she was playing and watching Baby Shark. Mila, can you say hi to everyone? Hi. <laughs> hi. What's your name? Mila Armstead. Mila Armstead? What's my name? Mila Okay, and, and what's his name? Daddy Armstead and C-John. <laughs> Daddy Armstead and C-John. All right, we hope you enjoyed this video. Go ahead and hit that subscribe button below so you don't miss out on any of our videos. And we will see you next time. Bye.